Welcome to Developing the Leader Within podcast, the podcast that brings you leadership insights from the brightest minds shaping our world. Join us as we dive into conversation with trailblazers, innovators, and change makers, spanning every corner of the globe. Get ready to explore new perspectives, gain actionable insights, and become the leader the world needs today. Unleash your potential. Tune into Developing the Leader Within podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Let's embark on this transformative journey together. Developing the Leader Within podcast, leading beyond limits. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode. Today, we are speaking with Luz Perez. Luz is the senior director, HR business partner at Freddie Mac, and the founder and CEO of Elucent Talent Solutions Consulting. She is helping businesses navigate the complexities of human resources with clarity and confidence. And she is also a fellow author in the Latino Leadership Playbook and a best-selling author of Latinas Rising Up in HR. Luz, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. So happy to be here. And I just want to say thank you, of course, you know, for giving the opportunity for us to chat a bit more about what HR has to offer. Uh, I'll give some disclaimers and that, of course, anything that I share today is based on my own experiences and nothing to do with uh, my recent employer, as an example, uh, but more than happy to share what those are and then seeing how I can help others, whether it is understanding it uh, or maybe even leveraging it in their own uh, corporate world. So thank you uh, again for having me. Yes, yes. More than We're more than happy to have you today as we're speaking about unlocking leadership potential, how HR transforms leaders into trailblazers. And it's a very interesting topic as we're talking the combination of the human resource department and leaders. There's typically not a way that you look at, okay, those two match together, but every leader should definitely be well versed with what HR does, the capacity that they have and the ways that they can leverage HR to better their leadership capability, especially for their people. But before we get into all of that, tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, of course. So you mentioned uh, a, a bit more of, of um, I'm going to call it accomplishments, you know, that I've had throughout uh, the years in HR, but I have been practicing HR for roughly 17 years. Uh, seems like an eternity and I'm probably aging myself a little bit. I started when I was like two, you know, um, but I have had a variety of different experiences in the organizations that I have been a part of. And so uh, by now I have now supported the healthcare um industry, uh, the technology industry, uh, and most recently the finance industry. And I do that just to continue to be well-rounded and really understand the world around me because that's how I feel I can be a more effective um, leader and someone who supports essentially organizational strategies. Um, outside of uh, my professional life, and as you mentioned, you know, being a co-author and now having also my own business, um, I am a mother of two beautiful girls uh, and I reside in Virginia. Uh, and they are essentially a pride and joy. They're six and eight. Uh, so as you can imagine, my, my, my plate is pretty full when I get home from work. Um, but that, you know, it, in a nutshell is a bit more about me. And uh, I am very passionate about helping our communities and being really involved in what we can do to further advance the Latino agenda in corporate America. So as a board member to the National Hispanic Corporate Council, a lot of the things that we do are, are really uh, aligned to making sure that corporations have a strategy for retaining, attracting, uh, developing, and engaging the Latino uh, co-workers or employees at their respective organizations. So again, that is a, a passion uh, for me. And if there are any questions uh, about NHCC and what we can offer, I'm more than happy to also address. Outstanding. And we're excited about the work that you're doing there. As I mentioned earlier, we co-authored in the Latino Leadership Playbook, mm -hmm a big community there and so grateful for that opportunity. Now in HR, a lot of people wondering what, what do they do? How come I, I don't feel so good to go in there. Something's going on, but there are like five typical HR functions and namely talent management, uh, compensation and benefits, training and development, compliance, worker safety. And so today we'll focus more and mainly on the training and development piece, 
But as just mentioned, folks, if you're listening, they know that HR did all that. Uh, and there's pl plenty more that comes through those uh, mediums. But those are usually the five that are centered around uh, that specialty. So uh, focusing on training and development, how do you align HR strategies with organizational goals to support and enhance leadership effectiveness? Sure. Um, there are so many different ways. And, you know, to your point, it also varies based on what area in HR you sit in and really understanding the, the role that you have in, in terms of how you support the organization. Being part of the um, HR business partner organization, we have an opportunity to um, have a seat at the table with executives. And the first thing that we do to align what we're working through is really understanding from them what their business needs are. Um, as it relates to um, one, understanding um, their go-to-market strategies, understanding how they uh, perform as an organization, what they expect from a, a skills-related perspective, and really understanding what are the challenges that you're facing today that we can then um, align with you on steps to follow to ensure that we are getting to a point where we're supporting your specific strategy. Now, of course, everything that we do revolves around people um, because we are in the business of people and really putting the, the human, you know, in, in organizations. And so if we have a great understanding of their strategic goals, whether it is short term or long term, we can effectively and efficiently create HR strategies that then support that vision and mission. Um, so again, understanding the objectives, and I actually wrote a lot of things down because uh, to your point, HR, there's a lot that is involved in planning, uh, executing on those specific strategies, and again, really understanding what uh, part you have in that, whether it is coming up with a talent acquisition program that, again, addresses the skills gaps that uh, a leader might have. Uh, maybe there's something missing specifically to uh, what they're looking for in the world of tech. Um, you know, we are getting into um, many issues with AI as an example, right? And so what are the type of jobs that you're going to need to ensure that you can address anything specifically to the use of AI? Uh, and then, of course, you know, with all the breaches that um, are going on, Cloud Strike was a huge one that companies are addressing, um, understanding, again, the type of people that they'll need for that. Um, if you have existing uh, employees that can maybe tackle some of it, but not all, how do we then develop a program that is tied to their own development, again, for the purposes of aligning uh, what we do to the specific strategy, if it is growing the use of AI, as uh, in the example that I gave, well, what can we help develop um, to ensure that we're addressing maybe some of the leadership gaps or talent gaps uh, within that specific organization? Performance management is also huge, right? And so if we have employees that unfortunately aren't performing or aren't meeting um, those objectives and expectations, how can we ensure that we are partnering with leaders to address those challenges? Um, and it's not just, hey, you know, here's a playbook, go follow it. <laughs> but it's really, again, understanding, well, how can I support you as um, your HR business partner to ensure that, again, um, you're hitting the mark and that your, um, your message is coming through the way that you intended. And of course, you know, going through, um, let's say, succession planning as an example, if we are going to have a gap in leadership and we have someone who is retiring from the organization, how do we ensure that we have a good plan in place to mitigate any potential gaps in leadership? Because we know and understand um, that an absent leader yields to maybe poor performance, right, or um, a limited ability to get things through um, the door, or again, just putting pause on a specific strategy only because that leader who is designing uh, what the strategy is may not really be present. But generally, it is uh, making sure that we're supportive of the organization, uh, that they understand who to go to and where to go to when they need the resources. And then just having a, a really deep understanding of what are the needs and then how can we best address them to ensure that you can continue to move forward with your strategy. Great information there. And you mentioned uh, leadership presence, which is such so key to yes. effective management of people, but also the task and work at hand. And it is one of those things that we look for when we're working as teams, we want to see that leadership presence and it, and it goes to leadership skills. So, Yes. Can you share examples of maybe how HR has successfully developed or improved leadership skills within 
on organizational structure? Absolutely. And, and I'm, I'm actually going to share something that was very, that is very specific because um, I worked on um, this specific uh, scenario, I want to say a few years ago. Um, but we were looking to understand um, the gap that we had in leadership and really take a deeper dive into why they may be leaving the organization and what causes them to leave. Uh, from there, we discovered that by not having a leader present, going back again to making sure that they were there, um, a given organization can actually be losing on a lot of profit, right, or revenue because of the gap in performance, the pause on different things that need to happen to ensure, again, that um, that particular team can be successful. And so because of the need to really build a business case around, again, understanding uh, whether or not there was a gap in development uh, in leaders, uh, and that's why they wanted to leave. So we look at a variety of different data sources to get this type of information, whether it is exit interview information, um, uh, engagement survey data, and again, understanding the feedback that they're delivering to us, uh, understanding spans and layers, and really looking at the team, uh, was it that they just didn't have the skills that were necessary to ensure that um, they can lead that many teams? Some people are not meant to be leaders. I, I honestly believe that. Uh, and you know, maybe they're better off being an individual contributor. And so it's understanding again, where are the gaps? Um, what exactly do we need to know and understand uh, to then address that? Um, how do we partner with their own leaders to understand what they have seen, right? Because it isn't just about what the data is telling us, but the data is a really powerful tool for us to at least make an initial observation. And then from, from there, just, you know, how do we confirm the hypotheses um, that we're looking at? And so from uh, looking at uh, development specifically is really going through what are the skills that they're lacking that this team needs to be successful? And how do we ensure that we then put programs in place, structure programs that can help them aid um, in that specific skill set? If it is leadership as a whole, uh, we put programs together that target many specific topics, whether it is, you know, how do I have a candid conversation with someone? How do I help develop a specific team member? Um, and we go through, again, information on. Um, here are some of the resources that you can leverage, but also this is how you put it into practice. And so we use people who might be really good at those things, um, because I think also people learn by watching their peers and hearing uh, what they have to say. Uh, but those are specific examples of um, things that we can put together uh, to ensure that leadership, leaders are essentially getting the skills that they need. But it comes with, again, understanding the feedback, understanding what they want to see as well. Um, and then from there, we do work with other departments to ensure that we have the right amount of resources um, put in place to address some of these things. And then again, um, ensuring that there's always a revisit to these topics, right? So we put something in place and people normally go through a training, but how do we, how can we do it so that it's recurring? So that if at any point in time, someone needs to do it again, see it again, uh, it's always available for them. Yeah, great points on that leadership gap because it's a huge issue when you're talking about how is it affecting my people? And then those people are going to come to you, right? <laughs> so they're going to say, hey, this is happening. Hey, this is happening. And then those things get addressed. But I wanted to uh, focus, and, and you mentioned the leadership gap piece already, but what role does HR play when you get to identify these to address those gaps and or any major challenges that come within the organization? Yeah, uh, we are the ones who essentially conduct the analysis, right? Understanding who are the leaders in the organization, uh, where do they actually sit today? Uh, reviewing, again, data that helps us understand uh, development gaps, development areas. And we also expect leaders to essentially um, document these things. Um, every organization has a very specific process that they follow when it comes to creating IDPs, which is essentially indiv individual development uh, plans. We help ensure that they're in the system, but the leadership usually owns these things because they're the ones who hired these leaders or employees. Um, I think leadership often always forgets that they themselves are an employee, right? They're not expected to know everything. And so um, they have resources to help them ensure that um, they do understand, you know, whether it is a, a team composition, 
again, how to have candid conversations, how to ensure that they themselves can have career conversations and conversations around individual development uh, plans. If we understand what those plans are, we ad identify um, the specific gaps and then we create programs that target those different gaps. Uh, and so whether it is, again, doing another assessment so that we can really drill down what that might be, um, having facilitators go through uh, presentations on specific topics that we know are going to be critical for their own success, again, as it relates to understanding what those gaps might be. Um, we collect feedback from their own employees, and then we share that feedback back to so that they can have some self-awareness around, you know, here are some of the issues that we're hearing and, and what we're doing. We provide coaching, advice, and guidance on uh, how to have these conversations and also how to even sometimes change their style, right? Because it is about uh, flexing in the moment or when you need it. And if you understand the needs of other people, then you understand how you need to approach different situations, right? So let me help you understand your style um, and then how you're coming across so that other people can, um, you know, ensure that they can see things from your own lens um, as you interact with them. Uh, and so again, we, we, do get, we look at that. Um, we also look at strategic planning. And so that again comes with an understanding of getting feedback from leaders of leaders uh, and understand what they're working on. Um, again, what their leader strengths are and how we can continue to leverage those strengths. Uh, if they're um, in need of exposure, we identify the resources uh, for those specific activities. If they need, um, let's say an executive coach, because maybe it's more about addressing that style and uh, we may have tried some things that are not really working. You know, how do we, again, identify a resource for them that they can leverage um, where maybe the styles can be a little different and the format of that conversation can be a little different, but it's being very in tune again with what is the gap, what's needed, and how do we assess it to ensure that we're providing um, the best solution uh, for specific leadership. Uh, and again, we do have reoccurring programs uh, that we attend to. And I mentioned one of them already being um, succession planning. We have another program called talent review sessions. During those talent review sessions, the expectation is that leaders are talking about leaders. Uh, and again, addressing some of the things that I already talked about in terms of understanding their strengths um, and then any specific opportunities that we want them to work on. And as we have all of this information, uh, making sure that there's always a plan where the leaders are, one, owning what the plan is, uh, and then having feedback and follow up and follow through to ensure that these things are, again, really being applied. Um, and we continue the assessment because these programs are annual. Um, so that it isn't a one-time conversation where, you know, you, you talk about it once and then you forget about it. Uh, but it is very present for us because leadership effectiveness is one of the most critical things that you need to have in any given organization. Very powerful and important for leaders to know that you got ownership. <laughs> this isn't you dropped it off at HR and then, you know, you're voided of it. It's, it's a partnership. They're coming alongside to give you all the tools and resources you need to make mm -hmm. your journey as a leader uh, successful and those of your teams. But there is a sense or a need for you to have some level of ownership of that process to make it actually something that's good. Now, here we have had several changes throughout these last four years, even in the workforce, right? How people operate, right? You mentioned, hey, I'm in a hybrid system. I'm in a work from home system. I'm back in the office system. So things have changed. So in those times of change, leaders need help trying to facilitate those things. So how does HR support leaders in managing and driving these organizational changes when they come? Yeah, so first I would say, you know, it's helping them understand the change first, uh, because as I mentioned before, they're also employees and I cannot expect for them to be experts um, at handling uh, every single little thing that happens within an organization from little to big, of course, right? And so from there is, how do you see the change um, as it came to you? What are your thoughts and ideas on how we can uh, ensure we have a clear communication plan? Uh, where do you feel your people are as it relates to understanding what's happening? Um, and then just really having a, a very candid and open conversation around um, what their thoughts could be, right, in terms of addressing that particular change. But we offer, we are essentially um, 
a shoulder to cry on, <laughs> a shoulder to vent on, right? Like we we really are a partner and offer a judgment free zone where it doesn't matter what you say. Uh, we're there to help support you through what's happening. Uh, and oftentimes, you know, that could be lacking. And so when leaders are not leveraging HR, as an example, uh, there's al always this expectation, right, that they are just going to be great at um, leading through change. And uh, that could be a gap for some people, maybe because they haven't dealt with it, maybe because they just um, have a new team, maybe they're a first time leader. There's so many things that uh, can impact someone's ability to react to a change. And HR just helps them go through that whole scenario. Uh, and sometimes, again, just um, essentially being um, someone where they can just bounce ideas off of each other, right? Like, hey, let's just walk through this and talk about it because not everyone is ready to jump at change. I mentioned earlier when we were chatting, you know, I, I thrive in chaos. <laughs> and so for me, I am so used to dealing with um, the constant uh, dealing of you know things that are essentially changing all the time and i adapt pretty easily to that but i know not many people can do the same thing and so it's taking a, a moment to pause and understand where they are in the journey and then from there okay you know what i can actually help you draft a communication plan i can help you uh ensure that we're building uh, a community where you have change champions as an example uh, we know and understand change management we know the practice uh and as hr we're actually trained uh, in change management. And so it's really going through uh, making sure that they understand what it is, they understand how to manage it. Uh, sometimes it's even also translating the actual change, right? Um, and other than asking for their understanding and saying, you know what, I actually have met with your leader. Here's what it meant for me. What, what are you thinking, right? Uh, and again, just making sure that they have whatever resources are needed at their disposal um, so they can just go and execute on these things versus spending a lot of time in uh, making all these plans um, that can just require a lot more than uh, what it should for the sake of, again, being able to move forward and then bringing their teams along the journey. And then, of course, you know, there's a lot of guidance and coaching um, that goes on through the process. Um, and that includes, again, identifying maybe very specific tools that are needed to apply a specific change. Absolutely. And you mentioned leadership support, how HR comes alongside, they help you navigate those challenges, but leadership support is different from leadership development, right? And there's a, there's a scale there that you have to go one step to the next. So mm -hmm. what strategies do you use to ensure that leadership development programs are inclusive and cater to diverse talent, because we mentioned, uh, you know, the Latino t uh, community earlier as we started, but there are so many different communities and so many diverse communities. So how do you do that for those, you know, for the talent within those organizations needs? Yeah. Um, so I mentioned, you know, data being a powerful tool and oftentimes I speak with data and that might mean again, really understand the composition of a specific team and then have a, a very open and candid conversation with the leader about where you might see some opportunities. Um, if, it, if there is um, maybe, let's assume that there's a gap even in diverse talent in, in one specific team. It's really just one, helping make sure that they understand why that is important, but also getting their perspective on what challenges they're having that is getting in the way of them having a diversified team. We honestly often get into conversations about, well, why do I need to do this, right? Or my team is pretty diverse. I have diversity of thought. And that is really, really important. But, you know, how do we help leaders understand it isn't just about diversity of thought, right? Because at the end of the day, if you hire people with the same background, then you're going to get the same results. How do you get to creativity? How do you get to innovation? How do you ensure that you are uh, maybe sometimes pushing the boundaries, right? Questioning norms. Uh, because in many of the spaces that we sit in, that is the expectation. We have to evolve with the world. Uh, and so if you lack diversity on a very specific team, you might be missing some maybe key components of some of the things that you're looking to address. And so having the conversation, giving some coaching and guidance around you know, what it is and what it isn't, Diversity isn't mean to be a check the box, right? And so as you deal with different people, the first question that we, at least me personally, try to coach leaders through is, I am going to meet you where you are. 
right? Uh, and that might mean, you know, I'm going to leave the formality <laughs> out the table, but I want to really understand you and really understand who you are as a leader. And whatever it is that you need from me to flex in the moment, we're going to be doing that together. And then the expectation is that you do the same with me. And then in turn, you do the same thing with your team. Uh, and so again, from there, we just really look at, let's explore the makeup of your team what's missing today, right? And then from there, when we build the programs, how do we ensure that we're actually addressing the needs of specific people? And it is understanding the styles, it is understanding how they operate, um, what are some of the things that might work for Latinos that don't necessarily work for you know, Asians, as an example, and really, again, just having a very candid conversation around what they think that is. Uh, and if they don't know, it's helping them understand because the one uh, I would say liberty or freedom that we have is that we can have pretty open conversations and those conversations are confidential, right? And we offer that to leaders. And so giving them the space and the room to um, vocalize their concerns. Um, and again, in a way that isn't um, judgmental. <laughs> and uh, as they have that freedom, just really working through and talking to those specific scenarios to ensure again that what they're doing um, can provide an inclusive, um, uh, essentially an inclusive approach. Uh, we do have a lot of programs in place, of course, you know, that talk about um, how you can be an inclusive leader. And so it also starts with, you know, education on what it means. Uh, how do we, for example, get leaders to really understand that uh, sometimes with people, you have to get underneath the surface, right, to really understand who they are and how they show up and why they even show up when they do. Uh, and then from there, tailoring um, anything that we put in place to ensure that we are 100% addressing those needs. So, you know, in a nutshell, we look at um, building a program design that, it, design that is inclusive by understanding, again, the needs of each team member, uh, that our own uh, programming from an HR perspective does have um, an inclusive thought, whether it is, you know what, they're in technology, as an example, uh, we don't often find me females, right? Uh, and it's not that we don't find them. It's like, well, maybe we're looking in the wrong places, right? So how do we take sort of our, sort of our own uh, learnings um, and even question how we do things for the, for the purposes of making sure that we are leading by example, right? I cannot expect a leader to be diverse if my programs aren't going to facilitate that for that leader. If TA doesn't have a platform or telling acquisition doesn't have a platform to go and find females in this particular case, then how do I really expect the leader to have more females when we're not really even offering that type of talent, right? So sometimes it just starts with us. How do we ensure that as an organization from an HR perspective, um, we have the right resources and platforms to ensure that we are being inclusive as an organization but also how, the, how do we then ensure that the leader understands what it means, what it doesn't mean, what it shouldn't be. And again, really just creating this notion of you have to meet people where they are and you really have to create a psychological safety for them. And that is how you get to being inclusive as a whole. And you start to think about your practices in that way, right? You embed it into who you are versus having to check the box on, okay, I hired this many females, so I'm good. Uh, but it's, again, understanding it, uh, translating that into your own specific business, identifying what it means to you, working with your HR partner on anything that you might have some challenges with, you know, whether it is, again, comprehension or just getting the right resource. And then from there, again, make also holding HR accountable if you feel you're not getting what you need from them. Outstanding. Well, folks, if you're in a leadership position, and you're not leveraging HR, as Luz has so eloquently explained, of all the things and facets that they can help you with, this is a department that's there for you. You must know how to ask some questions at times, but also how to go seek those things, because if you don't, the one that actually gets burned in the process is the team and individual performer. And if you're looking to address you know, the need for having a equitable and well-versed, inclusive type of team, then HR is the people you need to talk to because they can guide you. Outstanding information there, Luz. Thank you so much. Now, what do you have coming up and how can the viewer or listener get a hold of you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
So one, as part of NHCC, um, we have now developed a program for um, Latinos to essentially get into leadership jobs or executive jobs. So I'm really excited about that. And that might be launching sometime in the fall. So I would say first, please stay up to date with so many resources that we have today for Latinos. Um, the Latino Leadership Playbook, uh, it's honestly, I, I was so honored to have been a part of that because we really are just sharing best practices in terms of what worked for us and has helped, to, helped us be really successful in corporate America. So it's just, you know, making sure that we're leveraging resources. We're really hearing these stories because they matter. Uh, and the things that we need to do to continue to, again, accelerate our place in corporate America and in society um, only comes from us understanding, again, what those steps might be uh, and really just learning from each other uh, and making sure, again, that those stories are being heard. Uh, and so please be on the lookout for that because I, I guarantee you this is going to be a game changer and it will absolutely help so many Latinos that are just trying to get to the next level, but maybe are having uh, some challenges, you know, let's say lack of um, influence, you know, or lack of having a, a strong board, you know, that can help them get to, to that level. Uh, but in any case, you know, again, if you stay up to date with NHCC, there's a lot of information there that um, that you can leverage. Uh, and this is specifically for partner organizations, you know, so if your organization isn't a partner, I just highly encourage, you know, that this is one of those um, strategies that, that are put in place. Uh, within Latinas Rising Up in HR, we are actually launching volume three. Very excited about that. We launched uh, volume two last year. Uh, and so that will happen in Chicago in the fall. Um, there's more information in the Latinas Rising Up in HR network. So again, I just invite you to uh, follow us and, and learn more about uh, some of our initiatives uh, and our partnerships. Uh, and then personally, I'm, I'm going to run a 5K uh, to benefit uh, Latinas Leading Tomorrow, which is a, an organization based in DC. If I hadn't mentioned, you know, I am based in Virginia. Uh, and then I'm going to definitely participate in a lot of um, Hispanic Heritage Month events um, here locally. And so uh, I probably will be posting about these in LinkedIn. So going back to the last question around how can you get a hold of me, uh, LinkedIn um, is a great place to just, you know, one, learn a bit more about what these networks are doing, uh, but also understand, you know, how we can uh, continue to share information about uh, Latinos, you know, more specifically. Uh, and then just leadership, you know, I often post uh, different things about the world of HR uh, because it is my field and, and I'm very passionate about the things that we do. And this is why I have a consulting business to just really help um, small organizations understand the space of HR and what they need to do to ensure that, you know, everyone is compliant uh, and then have a good talent strategy in place. All right, folks. Well, we're going to have all of that as part of the show notes and the video. So you can get a hold of Luz and all that she is doing, uh, as well as follow her on LinkedIn. Now, I want to remind everybody that today's episode is sponsored by Fantail Services and Superpass, which are powering our website and app, Southern Sweet and Sassy Coffee, The Outlier Project, and Duco. And if you've enjoyed this episode and learned something interesting about the topic covered today, make sure to subscribe and let us know by leaving a comment. Now, we're always looking for new ideas and guests that we can add to the show. So if you know someone or have a topic that you would like featured on the podcast or want to sponsor our show, we'd love to hear about it by emailing us at triadleadershipsolutions at gmail.com. And today's podcast is brought to you by StreamYard, a browser-based tool that lets you live stream to any platform and record podcasts in studio quality. And we're using it to record our podcast. Be sure to tune in next week for another episode where we dissect leadership from another angle. And as we like to end the show, success to you. Thank you.